Today, we're gonna to be sharing a before and after story of one of my students as they transformed into a 3D print designer. Let's see what happened. Hello, fellow 3D printers. I am Jay Wall at Print That Thing. And over the past few weeks, I've had the privilege to get to know Jonathan over at Maker Tales. So Jonathan found me through watching the live stream that Devin and I did a few weeks ago. And you can watch a little recap right here if you missed it. But long story short, Jonathan signed up with Make Anything's link to become a 3D print designer. I got an email like, hey, possible collaboration. I've known you since Cat Armor. You know, maybe there's something we could do. I hope this email isn't too forward. Um, and I was like, who is this guy? I don't even, I like this guy. I don't know who he is, but I instantly emailed him back and was like, yo, uh, thanks for reaching out. You know, I'd love to do a collaboration. I don't know what we can do yet, but you know, let's figure some stuff out. And then I was like, jump in my virtual reality workshop and let's brainstorm, you know, let's think of some stuff. So within a few hours, he was inside this 3D printing truck in virtual reality in a gallery. So we just started brainstorming on like, what could we do? And I think he came up with the idea like, you know, we should show like a before and after where like, I don't take any design tips from anything else like YouTube, nothing. Um, I'll just jump into Blender and uh, maybe you challenge me with something. And I was like, okay, okay, that's cool. So uh, he was like, you know, send me some uh, some challenges and then I'll just try and do them without your course at all. And, you know, just, just jumping straight into Blender kind of blind and then we'll see how those designs come out. And then I'll do your four week workshop course and see how the designs come out for that and to see if my workshop actually helped him grow as a designer. So I was like, okay, that's cool. I like that, I like that. So. This is his story. And if you're someone out there who wants to eventually get into 3D print design or just learn how to do it, uh, you should stay tuned because I think you'll like his story. So I'm about to go over the challenges that I threw at him before he knew anything about Blender. So while I'm going over these, just think in your mind, if you think that you could design something like this, I thought they were gonna be pretty easy, but you know, they, they turned out to be a little challenging. So after a few days of thinking, I sent him four challenges on a PDF and he was just gonna open it and just dive in. And these were the following challenges. So the first thing I did was challenge him to make a 3D printable Suzanne head, kind of like this, like a like just make it a watertight 3D model, but then add like a Voronoi effect to it. So within a little bit of time, he messaged me back and he was like, hey, I'm stuck or something to that effect where he was like, I got in the blender, I'm looking around, I don't really even know what to do or how to move around at all. He was like, I was thinking, can I just take your free first week preview uh, to get the 3D print kind of basics out of the way? And I was like thinking about it, I was like, yeah, it is important just to know how to move around. Uh, so I thought that was fair, the reasoning was good. You know, so I was like, yeah, go ahead, you know, take that first hour and a half and just really kind of get the idea, get the 3D printer workflow and uh, just really understand how the UI works inside of Blender. So uh, within a few hours, this is what he made. Dun, 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 dun. So he made a 3D printable, watertight, Voronoi monkey head that could be 3D printed with no rafts, no supports. So good job, Jonathan. Woo, yes. So he did the first challenge with flying colors with a little assistance from myself. So now let's go into the second challenge where he has to go completely on his own and see what he creates. Also, if you wanna learn how to do this challenge as well, you can sign up for free on my website, um, on the courses, or we have free live training with me and a group of students, only a limited number of students, but you can sign up over at my website, ptt.live. And then that way, if you want to do this exact exercise with a group of students, uh, we do that every week. So check it out and uh, go sign up. But back to Jonathan. So the second challenge was to make a custom 3D photo made inside of Blender that's 3D printable with no rafts and no supports. So Jonathan created a slab of plastic with his logo stamped into it. And I'm not really even sure how he did it, but it's technically correct, so good job. But the design is a little weak and has some sharp edges sticking out the back somehow. Uh, but again, he succeeded, but this design is not as strong as his first. So good job, Jonathan, two for two. <laughs> so the third challenge was to make a toy car that is rollable straight off the 3D print bed, no rafts, no supports. Good luck. 
And with that challenge, Jonathan created this adorable boxcar 3D printable design. The wheels actually do roll, which is great, uh, but technically uh, it does require support material right around the wheels and the body. So eh, I'll have to fail that one again, but really good attempt and uh, super impressive for someone who's just jumped into Blender for a few hours. And the fourth challenge I gave him was to create a phone amplifier for his cell phone that could be 3D printed without any rafts or any supports. So with that challenge, he took it and created this really weird looking phone amplifier. Um, it's got a lot of jaggedy edges around the top here. Uh, I don't know if he was going for that look, but that's what it looks like. And then some kind of strange opening uh, around the cell phone. Not sure if a cell phone would actually fit in there, but it might. So, um, and it also looks like there would need to be some support material kind of in the inside uh, base of it. So technically failed that one too, but Really, really good job for someone who's just jumping in the software and trying to learn. So now we got kind of a level of where Jonathan is at in his 3D design for 3D printing uh, skills. So keep in mind that Jonathan is a super, super fast learner, super just smart dude in general. And I think he like took the whole entire four week workshop in about a day or two or less, I'm not sure. But how we do the four week workshop is we break it into four weeks of like an hour and a half lessons. That way it's not overwhelming for any new students. But Jonathan's a pro, so he asked me, you know, can I just kind of blaze through these? And I was like, oh, Jonathan, I know you said that you're probably uh, probably gonna blaze through the class, um, but yeah. if you don't mind just joining in on the workshops. Oh, too. no, not at all. I, okay, I wanna cool. join in every single week, and if anything, I'll just keep developing on yeah. what I learned. Okay, cool, cool. So how week one works is it's completely free, um, and it really just teaches you the basic 3D print design theory, how to do the workflow, and how to do some really cool modifiers. So now let's check out Jonathan's designs after he's in the workshop, taking it lesson by lesson, and you know, getting feedback from me and other students. So Jonathan dove straight into the full four week course. He already had made his Suzanne, but he just kept on making stuff. He added new modifiers to his Suzanne monkeys, making tons of different remixes like these. And then he didn't stop there. He took his door wedges and instead of just making you know, the normal door wedge. Uh, he just kept adding other things and just adding things that he learned from the previous lessons and adding modifiers to make these really funky and crazy uh, door wedges. So it's pretty cool. Week two is all about becoming a flexible designer and learning how to use powerful modifiers with clients or for your own projects so you never have to lock in any changes and you can stay a generative designer. So for week two, this is when I feel like Jonathan really got excited about Blender and was seeing the power and the flexibility of the software. So he would just made a ton of things. He made, um, he remixed his 3D photo with his logo, which looked way cooler, way better. And then he, went above and beyond and made a lithopane of Mars on a sphere, which was so cool, so clever. No one's ever done that. So, um, so very proud of him for doing that. He also made these really dope like Voronoi uh, vases and low poly vases or vases and uh, you know, even little curvy ones. So I think he had a lot of fun with that one. And then he made these really cool wearable rings that were custom to his finger and he had customizable text. One of them said, pow! And then um, there was one that was just no text but had a lot of texture that he had learned from previous weeks. And then he made uh, one that just said, I made this, which I thought was really funny. And then took that one and like added some modifiers to it to make this insanely high detailed model that I don't think is 3D printable. And he also said that. But, you know, maybe if there's like a three laser 3D printer from the future, uh, then it would totally be 3D printable and super awesome to wear. So even though this wasn't a 3D printable design, I was still really impressed and, you know, happy that he was trying these crazy designs and just really pushing the bar of what Blender could do as far as 3D design software. Week three is all about compounding what you learned in the previous weeks to do more advanced box modeling, subsurf box modeling, and slicing your designs into smaller pieces. So in week three, he made two types of cars, just the normal car that we do in the lesson, but then he took it to even further and made a remodel of the Tesla truck that can roll and comes out pre-assembled, which was very cool, very clever and of the time, so well done. 
Um, then he made two adorable box animals, uh, one that was just the normal happy elephant that comes with the lessons. And then he dove into his own design and made a crocodile, this cute little crocodile uh, with some you know, like sharp little teeth. Um, it would need some support material underneath the belly, but I think it's pretty worth it uh, because this thing is so cute. We also teach slicing in week three, like how to slice up a, a large design into multiple pieces. And he had a little bit of issues with that, but I'm working on other ways to help future students uh, understand, you know, more complex ways of slicing up models. So thanks, Jonathan, for pointing that out or just helping with that. Week four, you're going to smash everything you've learned together to make a phone amplifier to fit your phone, get the basics of sculpting, and get to learn how to use the EV render engine to export some shareable photos of your prints. Then came week four. Jonathan's new cell phone amplifier looks way more better and looks way more functional. So good job. You can definitely see his improvement in his design skills. He also learned the basics of sculpting and made his own little snowman. What I think he really, really enjoyed was learning how to render out pictures of his designs with Blender's new real-time render engine, Eevee. So some of the stuff, some of the pictures he sent me of his models being, after he, you know, put some up materials and things on it, look insane. Like this blue crystal door wedge. I don't even know how he did that, but it looks amazing. <laughs> So after talking to Jonathan, uh, he did mention that week four felt a little rushed to him on my part and that he thought it could have been a little bit more compound learning. So uh, thank you for that. And um, But either way, he still definitely improved and made some really cool designs. But if you're interested, you can watch his full entire review of my workshop from top to bottom. He's super honest, super, it's just great. So go check that out. I'll put a link up here in the little third eye here and you can go watch his video and he'll tell you everything that he really liked about the workshop, everything he really didn't like in a very honest and straight, straight up kind of way. So I really appreciate that. And the honesty and the feedback uh, is very helpful. And I told Amber this the other day, I was, I've literally been waiting for Jonathan to show up for like, probably over six months now, I'm like, there's going to be this student that shows up who just is like, just takes it above and beyond and then like points out a lot of things that I could have done better. And so, yes, thank you. Uh, I've been waiting for that. <laughs> so as a thanks to Jonathan, you can also use his link below makeyourtails.ptt.live to take any of the four week workshops or any of our courses. It also helps his channel grow. So if you've watched this video this far, I want to know what you want to learn how to design. So like I said, I'm already updating this course right now to make it better, stronger, you know, make you turn into a 3D print designer faster. But if there's something that you want to learn, just leave it in the comments and I'll try and add that into the course or into future courses ASAP. So overall, this challenge collaboration with MakerTales was so much fun. And I you know I've grown as a student, as a teacher and, um, you know, and have a cool friend over in the UK. Um, who sends me links daily. He's already like in the Discord, like, yo, check this out. Yo, look what Blender can do. Yo, what if we did this? Like photogrammetry in his room, like dude's on fire. So good job, Jonathan. Great to meet you, dude. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for taking the course. <laughs> so be sure to subscribe to both of our channels if you enjoy 3D printing or laser cutting or just maker projects in general. But yeah, that's all I have for you today. Be aware of your 3D printing waste and I'll see y'all next week. Peace.